All right, here we are with Peren. Now that they've been added to the late age with a couple new items and spells, we've got a whole bunch to go over. Hey guys, before we get started with late age Peren, just wanted to say I really do appreciate how much support you've given with all the subscriptions and dropping in friendly comments and feedback. It really makes a difference when I'm making these videos to know that you guys are paying attention and reaching out and enjoying the content as much as I am. Hopefully we can move forward and keep doing it, keep having fun, keep accruing subscribers so we can continue doing this more full time rather than less. But I just wanted to reach out real quick and say that I appreciated it big time. Now let's get on with the show. Let's be kind of quick, start off with our commanders. Castellan, leadership, not that impressive. As usual, fire and cold resist. Got a castle defense bonus, which can be useful. And 50% dark vision. He doesn't have the full-blown Cambian devil vibe going with him. <laughs> Still, just a notable commander. The scout, eh, nothing really to pay attention to. I wouldn't waste my turns recruiting that. The Marquet, or Marques, skilled rider, cold resist, fire resist, broadsword, lance, destrier, not really that impressive. That's a good protection, but magic resist, five. See, this is something I wanted to point out is ordinary commanders with mounts have a magic resist of five. If you look at your black goats, they have a magic resist of 13, and here as well, magic resist of 13. That's a huge factor in late game battles, so I really, really prioritize staying away from any of the Perennian knights. Same with your ordinary troops down here. They have a Destrier with five magic resist, whereas your Cambian knight has the black goat with the 13 magic resist. Something important to pay attention to. Perennian priests, I mean, decent leadership, fire resist, cold resist. That just helps with battlefield wipe spells. Blood mage level one, decent priest. But the big one that I use a lot is the blood bishop. I use these guys in expansion. I think these guys are ultimately useful. They have the 50 leadership. They're more expensive, but the two priest level helps bless your units so much much better in the early game and that way you have a little more flexibility instead of just spamming blood spells and being forced to drop blood slaves on each expansion party you can let them play around with glamour magic afterwards by rushing a little evocation then you have the cambian count these guys have great base morale i love them they are sacred but they are not blessed troops however you can throw these guys in a couple armies here and there and have them run around and stomp people and they're okay at finding blood slaves if you throw a blood searcher item on them you'll give them the sanguine dousing rod you'll give them the same equivalent searching as a blood three mage so it's nice as far as i know so makes these guys extremely efficient at searching however that brings me to the cambion kings one of my favorite searchers they don't require anything they're extremely adept at searching just throw them around searching and then they double as great battle mages especially the earth ones as little quick thugs or army support thugs throw an item on them and watch them stomp through people the thing you need to be careful with these guys is their crown they don't have a good helmet but given that the cambion kings have horrible morale for a command you can throw a fire helm on them and that reduces their chance of routing gives them plus four morale good protection and solves a lot of their problems because this is just an odd choice i get it it's thematic but my goodness does it cause you problems it even says cambian kings lack morals and would readily abandon their troops or their god if threatened <laughs> Cambian Countess. It's disappointing that it requires two turns to summon. Otherwise, I would say this is a great mage that you could use as a battle mage, but it requires the same amount of turns as everything else. I hope they rethink this and make this require only one turn to summon. For a good one turn summon, that's expensive, but good. Cambian Queen. This one makes sense to be two turns. The higher research, fire resistant 15, cold resistant 5. These girls are beast mode at casting a lot of spells. You get some earth you can throw in. It, basically, it's you have to look at this kind of like we did our TNG guide, where you have, instead of a bunch of communion mages, you have a bunch of Sabbath mages. So it's the same thing. You get some fire versions, you get some earth versions, and you get very rare nature versions. Those nature versions, man, I'll tell you what, you hold on to those because those are the only way to get regeneration into your Sabbath, other than just the standard spells you can cast to reduce fatigue and protect your mages. Cambian King, we already talked about them. Perennian Monks, these guys, Perennian Monks and Sorgina can only be built in non-forded provinces. I highly, highly recommend ignoring these monks. I see a few niche uses for them, but not enough to make it worth it to chance having a temple out in the middle of nowhere. But fortunately, labs aren't killed if your human players snipe provinces from you. So if you just put a lab in there, you've got a bunch of these Sorginas that can shape change into black cats, sneak around. They're not as powerful as the old mages, the Sorganax or whatever they were called in middle and early age, but they're still solid, solid battle mages. And you'll see that later with one of my big battle spells where I need them to go air magic instead of fire. So good commanders overall. Take a look at the troops. Crossbows. It's good they have fire and cold resist. Might have a niche case, but honestly, I would just get a regular crossbow men because they have better precision. You can see they have a low base precision. I don't really like them. Spearmen 
Foreman, basic spear, nothing really to talk about. Perennian Footman, solid, nothing other than that to say. Dark Vision only 50%, Dark Vision 50% for the Swordsman. I love these guys. The high base damage on their greatsword, plus the fact that it's a two-handed weapon, means every time you're adding strength, you get an extra 25%. So if you give them plus four strength with one of our big old battlefield spells at the end, instead of four strength damage bonus, you get five. So it's nice to boost these guys up with good thump. And if you buff their protection, they actually do pretty well. Vulnerable to crossbows, obviously. Perennian Man-at-Arms, great for bodyguarding. Easy to throw on a troop, low magic resist, so you have to be cautious with that, but they have the good base elemental resist. So get, get enemies to battle you in an elemental battle and you're good to go. Perennian Knights, like I said, I don't like them because they're solid troops, but Destrier has five magic resist, keeps your vulnerability up. If you look, your vulnerability continues being magic resist, but your Cambian Knights completely counter that, change the game for battle. So you want to focus on these guys because them and their mounts have good magic resist. So a lot of common tactics won't work against them. Very solid troop, really worthy of a massive bless. And we went for a massive but odd bless, but I'm going to go over a whole bunch of different options. Cathedral of the Crimson Emerald, good gem production. More good gem production gets you started in the blood path quickly. And there we go. We're also going to talk about the fact that you have blood glamour, air, sometimes earth and fire. You can perform blood sacrifices. Very important to remember. Turmoil limit, which is a little unfortunate, but you can get by with it. Standard forts. And that's about it, guys. Okay, next I wanted to touch on the heroes of this nation. Gory, Crimson King, comes with a random name, which is kind of odd, but he's a good fire mage, earth mage, glamour mage, and blood mage. Doesn't really give you anything you don't already have, just gives it to you as a better level. This enables a couple things for forging items for you, which definitely helps. And if you're looking for boosters for out of combat spells, he's a lot better at casting those just because you can put boosters on him and boost him much higher than your base one mages. Get him up to be able to cast some of those later infernal spells to summon a whole bunch of fire devils at once. His dominion immortality allows you to be super aggressive with him, which I absolutely love. His stats here are elevated by one because of his experience star. But other than that, he's a solid hero. Nothing special about his goat, but he's definitely solid. Well, hello, beautiful. And Malat, the Red Mistress, is the other hero. She's unseen, stealthy, she can dream seduce like any other. I wouldn't use her for that because her paths here, getting her into nature, make it one of your easier Sabbath setups with her. That being said, if you roll a random nature on one of your other mages, you can use those instead. But she's really good at enabling this, and she has high blood, so you can boost her up with blood. As long as you have blood three, you can create the blood thorn, and then throw it on her, and she's blood five, and now she can create the armor of souls and all the other items that you might need, like the armor of souls, at construction five, which requires five blood and 40 slaves. The blood thorn obviously enables this, but the brazen vessel construction five as well is five blood for 40 slaves. Armor of twisting thorns, three blood, two natures required. So if you put a nature booster on her, you can produce it and it costs you 15 blood slaves and 10 nature gems. So it can really knock you into some new paths as long as you're careful and don't lose her to some silly assassination attempt. All right, guys, now that we went over nation overview, I want to talk about a couple different options I made. There are a boatload of options you can make to bless your troops and run your nation with Peren. I had initially made a super trooper with the gray one I went imprisoned and kind of a rainbow bless strategy, shock resistance, swiftness, reinvigoration, strength of the earth to punch through high protection units with our Cambian Knights, five times undying for that 10 undying HP that protects us from the smite demon spell that hits. Gave him true sight just in case I'm facing a bunch of players that are using illusions. Enchanted blood, give me a little healing, sometimes keeps you alive through the Undying and Blood Surge for a little extra punch power when you need it. In addition to that version, I also gave the anti-player gray one, four times Undying, Luck and Enchanted Blood. This was solid. I liked it. It gave me a little better scales. I wanted the growth and neutral magic. However, the problem I ran into was because the gray one splits Fire Earth Magic, Air Astral Magic, Blood Nature, and then they split the Death Water and Glamour through, I didn't really have a great Glamour Mage because you can see it's lower than what I actually had to put for the Luck point here. So it's actually up to eight, but it, it's only showing you one of the gray ones. So this is what you get is you get a really weird like mixture of paths that aren't really good and you can't cast any global spells. I hated that. Plus I hate micromanaging all three when I don't have a clear reason for each one of them. So what I did instead was I went for the great enchantress. It was a little more expensive. I had to take drain, but frankly, you kind of want drain once you've got your research already going. You might not want drain too. That was a little too taxing for my research purposes, but you had to take drain anyway. 
and we have a dormant enchantress instead of something imprisoned and we have enchanted blood for that magic resist boost we have luck because i'm telling you when you have this much undying luck is amazing once you get down into the undying hp and hit zero with your cambion knights every single bit of damage no matter what unless it is one of those instant death spells that ignores luck will automatically proc and give you a 75 percent chance to negate so it really 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 makes your cambion knights super super strong throughout the whole battle and now you have a level eight glamour mage you have a level four blood mage if you get the blood thorn dagger it will enable you to get to blood five which enables you to produce all the other blood boosters really gets you into all of the massive blood spells gives you two air which is hard for you to get on this nation as well so you can have your pretender spamming storm demons all sorts of options you can get vampires you can cast blood fecundity to boost your growth which i highly recommend in various provinces just a really good overall pretender this is the one i went with for my expansion and my quick playthrough though of course we're going to come up with new strategies as time comes on with this nation all right guys as usual talking about spells i'm going to glance over the basics you don't have a ton of stuff you want to be casting in here i mean some stuff is useful in conjuration alteration blur is very useful for your troops good little point buffing group blur obviously enhances it twilight's great it grants glamour skill to all of your mages if you want to specialize in glamour in a couple battles nightfall is great because all of your demonic troops have perfect dark vision so that's really a good advantage you can take against some players that don't have the same benefits displacement very powerful so is invisibility for your mages since you have those powerful demon knights that also have glamour capabilities eternal twilight is a good global spell to consider late game it gives you plus one magic scale so it removes that negative magic we took on our dominion and gives all battles twilight effect which your demon knights don't suffer from it also helps with the theme of us running around seducing people so it's kind of fun to do evocation one spell i like to rush really early is warrior illusion i know it doesn't seem like much but if you can have your mages like your bishops blessing your knights and then when the knights run off and he's alone you know how often you get sniped by a random indie troop that gets through well warrior illusion spam is relatively low fatigue cost and he does it and they catch the enemies on the way in oftentimes and save your mage it's quite nice early game shroud of splendor something we can cast on our troops to give them awe as a point buff gift of splendor a little larger obviously aura of splendor even bigger and warriors of the dawn even bigger nothing really else that stands out to me other than just basic point buffs they're very useful they're very good the fata morgana is much better now that we have the false damage system in play and mists of deception is obviously super powerful but they're basic spells everybody has them i don't want to spend too much time on them burning through them that goes the same for earth spells such as personal iron skin and all that i'm assuming you guys know how to point buff a little bit now if you have any particular questions let me know thaumaturgy we have a couple of those we have some luck spells luck is very important on normal nations but since we took luck on our bless it's a little less important for us i do like confusion i like playing around with it and it's enjoyable to see what you can do by mixing up battle formations and messing things up but it's not something i would hyper prioritize when you go into blood magic there's a new set of blood spells for our nation summon incubus and summon succubus these are normal spells for other people we just get them way sooner so i abuse the succubi i haven't really seen much use for the incubus as there aren't that many females running around female commanders that we want to target but you do have the option if you want to go for it but the succubi are extremely useful they're all glamour two mages as far as i know and they're very 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 useful with their ability to scale walls we'll talk about that later i'll show you a disgusting little trick to just trap somebody inside their cap circle and just take all of their mages to open up paths for you in the magic paths otherwise typical blood sabbath master and sabbath slave you definitely want to focus on summoning imps is a great battle spell early we don't want to talk about this spell nobody talks about this spell we're all in an understanding about this spine devils are great against cavalry cavalry run into them and smack them and kill themselves with poison hell power i like it in very niche cases but i don't like it in general because of the horror marking you got a bunch of flexibility here with devils for fire frost fiends a little harder for you to cast you could take it on your pretender if you really want to specialize on it crossbreeding same thing blood fecundity very important this is why i take nature on my god awaken dark vines important if you need something with huge massive amounts of hp or if you just want to completely destroy somebody's income this does the job demon knights are phenomenal as always pretty typical that hasn't changed blood right gets you a couple basic vampires they're immortal so they're useful they're fun but i don't know i feel like there's a lot more you can do until late game late game these are awesome but if you're going against them late game ohm you might run into somebody who does it better curse of blood that's where it really gets good if you can boost your pretender to be able to cast this then you get the vampires who you can give a skull staff to and they're able to summon themselves so that's really powerful it's a good way to get into the death path but this one infernal tempest is one of my favorite it was in dominions 5 only i 
think seven plus for the summoning amounts. Now it's 12 plus to represent the larger armies and it's phenomenal. I just love it. You cast it five or six times and you are loaded up with 60 storm demons that just annihilate people. Storm demons are very, very, very powerful and it makes this nation very strong to go through all of that. And under spells besides that, this is the stuff we don't want to talk about. This smite demon is what you need to orient your sacred strategy around. That's 15 armor negating, but magic resist negate. So either at their base MR, the enemy priests that are level two only have a 30% chance of killing your sacred, which doesn't sound high. But if you really think about it, that means essentially every three and a half times they cast it, they're going to get you. So you need to factor in the fact that you only have 16 hit points and plan on being hit by that quite a bit. So either get more MR, get less luck, get something that blocks it, get undying and regen, something that really protects you from that. And don't forget, when it comes to casting your own divine blessing and divine channeling and fanaticism and all these, just put a priest into your Sabbath since you have so many Cambians that can do such things. But remember, just because they're sacred doesn't mean they can cast holy spells, which is why I mentioned I love the blood bishops. They can hop in and they just start spamming the top level spells to boost everybody else and get your armies going. All right, here we go, guys. Year one expansion. We're trying out that crazy bless that we made luck incarnate only she comes in after one year enchanted blood and a dying eight theoretically we can kick butt with this early but we're trying it out and already we're getting screwed by our resources so maybe we'll have to try this out in a different way but we'll see so what we're going to do is crank out two of these footmen because that's all we can afford one of the cambian knights grab a perinian priest and a blood bishop set our research up for blood magic one reason for blood magic one is obviously you want to have something to cast early if you get in trouble or rushed i like summon imps just in case you ever get in trouble alteration two because i'm getting really sick of losing mages to random arrows. Personal stone skin helps a lot with that on my mages that have it. And evocation too. All of our mages have glamour. Warrior illusion is a great spell for them to just spam. And it's a really nice one for them to default to that doesn't have too much fatigue so they don't fatigue themselves out. So we're just grabbing all that. And now let's see what happens. Here we are turn two. Battle in Lyratos was just the scout poking around. See what he's looking at. Okay. Lots of heavy infantry and militia, light infantry, and a priest. Level one priest though. Keep that in mind. Where the demons sort of bewilderment. Magic resist negates, but it's armor negating damage and it confuses them, which is great. Looks like we've got crossbowmen, heavy infantries, jaguar tribe. When in doubt, go to the jaguar tribe. That'll also give us, since it's a forest, it'll give us a lot more resources. Let's head on up there, see what we can get, and then send our scout out. This one's iffy, because it could be crossbows and heavy infantries. Could be pretty heavy, or this one could, but this one says 70 units. Same recruitment. Not gonna be able to do much more than that. See what happens. Turn three. Let's see what the results of our battle are. Setting our knight four to ruin this guy's day. There we go. Get on. See, they're tanky enough that they can survive most of the hits with their small amount of regen. Three spearmen, acceptable losses. Bunch of crossbows, barely any infantry. Okay, a lot of crossbows. That's good. If we can get a couple knights there, we can go smash them. This one looks like it has even less now. Go here. Militias, heavy infantry, light infantry looks pretty simple. Be something to consider. We've got a couple mages rolling now, so our research is coming along. Fairly slow because of our drain one, but... Had to do it. Let's take our blood bishop. All right, set ourselves up to get a couple more Cambian knights. See if this really has 30 people. All right, guys, here we are in turn four. See what happened with our battles. Oof, that's going to be rough. Good snipe. Now it's one on four, five. But he's still winning. Ooh, gonna lose a lot here. Word of bewilderment and helping out. Lost quite a few. The spearmen might get in trouble soon. Scout found out. Heavy, light, bunch of militias. Send him here. Send him over here to drop them off to him. Those on guard commander, just in case. Have them meet up, and then after this, we will be cranking out. I would say it's even more important to crank out Cambian knights than your mages, which is something that's quite rare. But you really need to keep these knights going so that you have that force the following year to levy when you're running into other players. All right, turn five. Let's see what happened. Exactly as we expected. Don't even need to see the battle. Two of these on guard commander. Throw that one in there. Why not? Throw him in there. Get some extra HP buffs. Send our profit here. We're doing a little shenanigans with these guys just bringing troops around so we don't lose too many turns going back and collecting. But these blood bishops are going to be our normal mages that carry battles for us. So we're going to want to get them rolling in on the recruitment. And personally, when I have the amount of resources to use what I want, I like these guys. I know they're vulnerable to crossbows, but I really like the 24 damage that they provide. Hey, if they're dead, they're not swinging. All right, guys turn six see what happened yep 
wiped out. Perfect. The reason for splitting these up is you don't want the minus one morale for having undead and demon or er, humans in the same group. All right, boys, turn eight. Let's take a look. Scout, typical heavy cav. Okay, only six. Uh, victory. Okay, and a loss. So apparently, four Cambian knights is not good enough for us. Pretty good showing, but getting overwhelmed. All right. Well, hopefully they retreated in a way that helps. Loren, good. Let's try this again. We know there's only six cav, so now let's take that for the good gold. Actually, let's take out the trolls because we know we can hit them pretty heavy with this and just knock them out. If there's a troll shaman, actually send him in there. Militias and light infantry, and then we'll come back and hit that. Take this guy out, and then this heavy cav with only six will be knocked out by this guy next. All right, boys, here we go. Turn eight. Let's check it out. Research and alteration just finished, so no more of those random snipes, even though we've been doing all right and not being knocked out by them yet. Throw some blood magic on there just for lack of something else to do. Scout was beaten by the shaman. Let's see if this shaman is one of those ones jam-packed with death and nature gems. Yep, but he won't cause too much of a problem, hopefully. What are we looking at? 26 hit points, 11 protection. These guys will get thumped by the knights. Okay, let's see what their HP damage is. 30 damage. Oh boy, that could be a problem. We did fine. City and waste, just fine. Ooh, unexpected event. Nature gems? Okay, take those. Unrest. That's not fun. We just got murdered on gold. Oh, wow. Unrest to lower our gold for a couple turns and minus 100% tax this turn. That hurts. That hurts a lot. Wow. We want to start getting some of these Cambian kings. So we'll just keep producing. All right, boys, turn nine. See how we did? Looks like we're slaughtering on those battles. Another unexpected event. Now we get a bunch of gold and some dominions. All right. This is a wild... For somebody who took good luck, I'm getting some random events all over the place. But as much as to be expected. Well, here. Did well here. Still looking like we're solid. See, this is the strength of Peren, where we seem to just be able to continue as much as we want. Okay, not interested. Let's head over here, take a look, poke around. Let's see what our scout sees over in this province. All right, boys, I think it's turn 10. Let's see what happens. Uh, ooh, we lost one of the knights. Let's see how that happens. Bad luck, I suppose. He's at zero hit points. Let's see if he gets the positive before the end of the battle. There we go. And that's the beauty of the undying. Now he lives. Love it. Ooh, had to kill a whole hell of a lot of people here. Only lost one crossbow. Excellent. Militia's heavy in archers. That's pretty weak. Oh, the poor scout got annihilated by a Draco lion. Another unrest minus taxes. All right, boys, turn. 11. We just finished evocation research. Now we can cast our warrior illusion to really increase the defense of our mages in the back of those small expansion parties. Uh, ooh, good. A rider's cheaper. See how this battle went? Pretty much as expected. A few people slipped by and got hit by the swordsmen. Ooh, we lost the knight. Tough work. Heavy infantry must have surrounded them. They only have three, so it's pretty tough. Cammy knights and the blood bishop. Nice. Good work. Excellent. Okay. We're looking solid right now. Turn 11. We're, uh, this is our first blind expansion attempt with this nation. And all right, here we go. Turn 12, boys. Oh, we got lucky. Our god showed up already. Let's see how our first battle went. Cambian Knights doing work. Swordsman died. Wow. Interesting battle. Let's see what happened. So the crossbow fire just annihilated us. Yeah. As we said, crossbows will handle our swordsmen. So expected. Excellent. 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 And here we go, boys. An example. Crossbowman hit Cambian Knight with a range attack crossbow in the body for zero points of damage. Luck negated the otherwise fatal damage. Good example. He has seven hit points. This would have hit him for six. This was back when he was at, I think, two hit points lower, but he regen back from it. But the key is this triggers anytime they're in undying. So remember that. So you've got a whole bunch of these luck rolls going on, making sure these guys are way tankier than you think, even things such as gifts from heaven. So now let's count our provinces and see what we ended up with. All right, boys, without really planning anything, this is our literal first attempt. We got 21 provinces. So I don't think you're going to have any problems expanding with Peren. Just remember, when in doubt, pick the Cambian Knights and pick your swordsmen. It'll help you expand and keep a good supply of these blood bishops up so you can have warrior commanders that can carry your troops around with you. Later on, transition into Cambian counts for your leaders with their morale of 16, well, technically 14, versus the morale of just base 10 of the Cambian King. I don't like using them as commanders. I'll use Cam Cambian Kings as spellcasters, but since you have essentially a communion nation, you know, a Sabbath nation, and all they give you is blur or glamour along with the Sabbath and earth and fire, you can get the same thing from here, from a Cambian Queen. And although she has the same bad morale, I'd rather use something that is tanky than squishy. So go with them for spellcasters but that's it. And that was year one expansion. Let me know if you guys would like me to do it in a different way next time, or if you guys are comfortable with this style. See you on the next one. All right, guys, we're going to start a pitched battle. I'm setting this up the best I can. Divine Blessing, Word of Bewilderment, you know, basic stuff for our prophet. The Divine Blessing just makes it easy. We've got a Sabbath Master hopping in, Summon Earth Power. That'll give Summon Earth Power to all of our slaves. Personal Iron Skin, that'll also give Iron Skin to all of our slaves. Legions of Steel, that'll just generically buff the entire battlefield for us. We've got another Master, Summoning Earth Power, and then 
and casting Marble Army. They might not get it off. I have no idea why. They have plenty of Earth Gems, but they should be able to pull it off. In addition, we have another Master casting Phoenix Power to give that to all the slaves, and then Fire Fend. We're going to have a Sabbath Master giving Rush of Strength, which is plus four strength for all friendly units, and then Reinvigorate to try to remove all fatigue from him as well as all the slaves. We're going to also have another Master pop up, give Elemental Fortitude for resistances to all the slaves, Personal Regen to all the slaves, cast Howl at the very end if possible. We're also going to have a Sabbath Master with Air doing Storm, followed by Fog Warriors multiple times because our Fog Warrior spam needs to be all over our warriors so that they get mist form on them. We also have another master doing heat from hell and firestorm. And then we have a bunch of slaves with enough slaves to just cast the spell with reduced fatigue. So hopefully this works out. It's not a super careful one, but you guys can go ahead and check out the battle as soon as we end this turn. All right, guys, now we're here on the next team. Let's see how this battle went for us. We got all the divine blessings going on. The Sabbath started. The enemy team is casting spells everywhere. A bunch of knights rushing forward. There we go. We have Storm up and we have Heat from Hell up. As we script them. Now we have Fire Fend up, Marble Army. Fog Warriors, Legions of Steel. Howl. Firestorm. Look at us dropping the damage now. Storm Demon's doing work. Bloodletting. Curse of Stones. Giant Warriors. Yet another example of what Communions and or Sabbaths can do if you set them up. I didn't even care for to set the Sabbath up, so I'm guessing those screaming sounds are the slaves dying of fatigue. Turn this clean up. There we go. I feel like spellcasting was effective that battle. What do you think? Let's go check out the battle replay. Here we are, the Cambian Countess with 35 kills to her name. Cambian Kings with 48, but they were more interested in buffing. The Red Mistress, all by herself with our Firestorm and Heat from Hell, 257 kills. Sorgina's 69 kills, but then 10 of them died. One of them basically got 69 kills. The other 10 were slaves, I think. 75 kills from our Knights. They held up. Only lost three of them in that huge pitched battle, mostly because of the luck and the undying and synergy. 116 kills by the Storm Demons. At the end of the day, guys, we are again at 433 troops, 167 crossbows, 77 defenders, 49 axemen, small amount of mage support, Lord Wardens, Magister Arcanes, Lumber Constructs, bunch of Tower Knights who got no kills, Wardens. We only lost 76 out of 261. They lost 429 out of 433. Just remember, at the end of the day, even with the Cambian Countesses and the neat demons running around and everything, you're still just a blood nation. So focus on blood tactics and launch blood spells and pick your battles. We also have a pitched battle against Marignan. We're not going to be spamming all the fire spells, but against somebody like Man, we are. So pick your battles, set up your Sabbaths, and cast your spells. All right, guys, here we go again with another battle. This time we're going against Marignan, who we know has strong fire. So we're going to, instead of doing our massive battlefield-wide spells, we're going to try to set up a Sabbath here where we're summoning storm power and thunder striking people. I think I need to put storm power after something else. We might want to do a few protective wins and and then cast summon storm power and then thunder strike it. We might want that because I think we need to time things. Should be good. Let's see what happens. All right, here we are. Let's see what happens in this major battle. See if we actually timed the storm powers correctly against a big old Marignan battle with a boatload of hands of justice, boatload of city guard, a couple flagellants, a few terracotta soldiers even thrown in, tons of crossbowmen, tons of swordsmen. That is a lot of troops. And we've got a little bit of mage support in the back. Might even have a Sabbath going out. Remember what I scripted them with? But we've We've got our smaller army with some storm demons and a bunch of mage support over here. So let's see what we can do with the Blood Nation. Got a bunch of divine blessings. Let's see what they have. I don't remember. Undying, HP, Strength, Enchanted Blood, Blood Surge, Dark Vision. Nothing too special. Let's see what we do with the Sabbath. Let's see if we time storm before the storm power. Protective winds. Here comes storm. There we go. Timed it just right. Now let's see what happens when we start dropping thunder strikes on them. There's the storm powers. Here come the thunder strikes. Ooh. Interrupted one of their spell casts. Nice.
There we go. We got the route. Look at there, the flexibility of Perrin. All right, so we got a flexibility move going on there. Let's see what happened. We got 34 kills with the Cambian Kings, 340 kills with our Sorginas, 70 kills with the Cambian Knights, chasing people down with their buffs, six kills with crossbows, two with man at arms, 76 kills with the Storm Demons against a mostly fire resistant nation. So there you go. That's how you make it versatile. And remember, again, at the end of the day, we're still just a blood nation. And we're going to do a quick little snippet on these guys, these Storm Demons. These full blown little monsters go up to 19 damage if you buff them properly and it's armor negating damage will affect both the rider and the mount so it'll hit cavalry and their mounts range is 40 precision is three and they don't lose that precision in a storm only cost five fatigue small area shock one armor negating stun basically and your guys will annihilate people with this they are storm powered and they are storm immune so all their stats get boosted the important one strength attack by three when they're in a storm they're ethereal so they're difficult to target and knock out they're shock resistant themselves and and if they get attacked in melee, they'll hit you with their Thunder Fist and they'll still zap you with lightning. These are very, very powerful blood summons. I've already talked about them in the blood magic video that I did, but I really love storm demons because they add such a layer of lightning to your nation. Even if you don't have it, just spam summoning these guys grants you a bunch of lightning damage, which is forcing your opponents to respect it. And just doing that and being tactical with these little 32 map move monsters that can hop, skip and jump around wherever you want is very powerful. Whenever you have a troop that's this effective without needing to be blessed it's very very versatile and it's something you should take advantage of for sure all right guys here's one of those particularly nasty tricks i was talking about you are sieging somebody in their castle preferably their home base their capital city instead of ending the siege and rushing in just sit here with your succubi with their soul scale and a lifelong detection or some other kind of thing just in case it turns into an assassination battle and just sit here and seduce it's pretty miserable for the other team and here is unfortunately for the other team what it looks like when you're sitting inside your base Magister Arcane disappeared one night and was never seen again. Managed to resist a hostile attempt and a battle ensued. Let's check out what happened with just the simple item of lifelong detection. See what happens. Well, that's never going to end well. So he's dead. Bjorik the bishop disappeared one night and was never seen again. And then nothing else that turn. But every turn you do this, you can just sit here spamming and stealing mages. And here we are as Peren. Take a look. Here's Bjorthik the bishop. Here's Yaela. She's got to go back now. And then you can tell them to just ruthlessly do it again. And we have Senwath, the Magister Arcane. Well, guess what? Now we've got Astral. We want to start a communion. We've got Earth and we've got Air. Find something like this. And now you can set yourself up a nice little decent communion. So I highly recommend you try it. Level three thrones are fun to do it with too but the problem is you can throw a lot of gems away against something that's not a player such as an earth mother like this map and i wouldn't recommend doing it because snagging the level three throne mages is quite difficult unless you really gear your succubi to be somewhat like super combats so anyway sit on top of castles abuse the scale walls ability of your succubi and snag yourself any paths that you normally can't pass with this nation all right boys hope that was fun for you now that we're at the end just remember most of the time you can play this nation just like a regular blood nation late age peren is very very heavily leaning into blood. They have demons already that are recruitable and you're going to be vulnerable to many of the same things. Make sure you protect your demon knights against smite. Get away from me, Satan. Or have a plan for it and make sure you abuse your early access to succubi to snag some early commanders in the early slash mid game to get yourself into paths that you normally wouldn't break into. Otherwise, let me know in the comments below what nations you'd like to see next. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know what you guys thought. See you on the next one.